defenseman uh, as a unit. I think Toronto Maple Leafs should run away with it. And these guys were there through thick and thin. It had its wear and tear on them, but they were so consistent. The Leafs also decided to try and do something to get Joseph off his game. It worked. They crowded him, and while it didn't produce a plethora of goals, it did produce the winner. Now it's Borshevsky again. On the boards to Gilmore. Back to the line to Gil. And Gil takes his shot. Rebound score! The Leafs take the lead as the shot came from the blue line. Their most complete game of the series. Like in Series 1, the Leafs were all tied 2-2 heading to Game 5. The Blues' game plan was no different entering this one. A tight defense employed by Coach Bob Barry and a hope that Curtis Joseph would repeat his Toronto heroics of Games 1 and 2. It did not work. This is Gilmore, Andrew Chuck and Brett. Dave Andrachuk's two goals gave him 10 playoff goals, tying a club record. There is Foligno coming in. Foligno going for the net. Beautiful shot. Anderson scoring. A net great play by Mike Foligno. And it's 5 to 1. That goal pushed Anderson past Rocket Richard on the playoff goal list, a testament to his skill. One of the best all-time flakes, but a great money player. The bigger the game, the better he plays. The 5-1 final had the Leafs within one game of the Norris title. The gateway to the West, the Arch in St. Louis, welcomed the teams back to the arena for Game 6. Pat Burns was worried about his club, but early on his fears appeared needless. Brown is back. He won't clear it out of the zone. Todd Gill stopped it. Quick pass ahead. Warshevsky to the side of the lab and centered. And then returned for the net. And the light is on. It's a goal. The Leafs have scored a power play goal. That goal set a new club record for most goals by a player in one playoff year. Once again, both goalies were great. Potvin holding the Leafs in while Joseph blocked 40 Toronto shots. But the Leafs tried what Pat Burns referred to as shortcuts, and the Blues' Dave Lowry tied it. St. Louis then showed character of their own. Craig Janney would be injured on this check by Wendell Clark, but the Blues held tough and won it late. And keep him on the outside. Emerson again, Farway. The Blues have taken the lead! Not liking prosperity, the Leafs would need a win in Game 7 to capture their first and the last Norris Division title. The atmosphere was electric on a Saturday in May as Game 7 approached. The first Game 7 at Maple Leaf Garden since 1964 when Andy Bathgate scored the cup winner. Early on, the Leafs simply blasted the Blues away. This one was no contest. Gill takes over. Gill slides a pass in there on the right side and gets it handed back. Hammers it. He missed the goal. Rebound. Score! Andrew Chuck scores. It is Gilmore and Clark. Clark takes the puck. Gets away from Giles. Clark centered it. Koshalewski and Anderson coming in. Anderson and center. Koshalewski and Anderson. And a beautiful play. It is Anderson up the chart. He's home alone. Home alone. Scores. With past Leaf greats looking on from their alumni box, the crowd watched as Captain Wendell Clark continued the Toronto siege on Curtis Joseph.
turns away from Lowry. A pass to Gilmore. He's going in on goal. He scores. Gilmore. Six. Nothing. Toronto. That goal by Gilmore gave him another notch in the club record book, passing Daryl Sittler. As the clock counted down, the architect came down to pay his tribute to a 6 dubbing win. Five seconds left. Six nothing Toronto. You got it. Here in Toronto, they they've they've suffered for a long time, and and, and to win that division was something. It was uh, something that not only in Toronto but across Canada. I think a lot of people have, have now said, well. You see all these old Maple Leaf fans that come out of the closet all of a sudden and, and become, and that's what we wanted to do. We, we wanted to bring back the pride in the Maple Leaf. Next up, the Leafs would face a man who knew all about that mystique, growing up only a few miles from Maple Leaf Garden. Well, I've never played a playoff game there. I was there one time for a playoff game when I was about uh, 14 or 15 years old. I just came in and had a standing room ticket uh, to watch the Leafs play the Flyers. But, um, you know, this will be exciting. Impressive? You bet. The Maple Leafs among the final four of the National Hockey League, heading to the Campbell Conference Final against Wayne Gretzky and the Los Angeles Kings. The city was going hockey mad. Toronto once again was a hockey town. Gretzky looking for his fifth cup and the Kings first, and the Maple Leafs looking to win their first Campbell Conference championship. And as we got set for game one in Toronto, it appeared that all of North America was watching. Brody slapped at it, it's knocked down by Cezol, Cezol center block. Pretty free, 81 on blue. Pass to center to Gilmore, he falls, but shut the puck in. Where's the chance for Gilmore? Stick save, rebound! One great touch on save on red. Five. five. Happy back it up. Kings who dress seven defensemen are playing five. Water's not seeing much ice. Puck back of the net and Gilmore in there. It'll come off the boards to Rouse. Slides and passes and score. Gilmore tapped it in after Rouse shot it from the blue line. One and up in Toronto. This series was to be a matchup of Wayne Gretzky versus Doug Gilmore. 93 got the Leafs up early, while 99 set up Pat Conacher for the tying marker. Later, Gilmore took over, playing what Harry Neal called the best six minutes of hockey he'd ever seen. Watch it right here. After the pass, Gilmore way down low. Perfectly legal. Gilmore got the pass and goes in with Clark. Clark on a steep end. angle, couldn't shoot it. Here's it. Intercept. Yes! Intercept. Gilmore would notch four third period points to end the evening, or so we thought. And Gilmore. The Leafs coasting home to victory here in game one. Anderson comes in. Gilmore was hit inside the line by McSorley. And this is going to draw Clark and McSorley into a rocket. They're going throwing punches. Oh, Clark is nailing McSorley. Now McSorley comes back. Our best player was laying on the ice and and hadn't got up yet. Had he got up right away, we'd have continued the play, but he uh, hadn't got up, so I thought he was more hurt than he was, and and so I just uh, went over and talked to Marty. Boy, this is nasty feelings now. I don't know whether he's talking to L.A. King players. No, he's not. He's take, talking to Melrose. Look and out. Burns is trying Look to get out. down at Melrose. Behind the leaf bench, there's Burns telling Melrose, if you want to play that way, you're going to have to go through me too. You know, I feel I'm part of a team. And uh, if I could go out and help my player, I, I don't think I'd step on the ice and do it. But you want to do it.